Now, I want to totally contradict myself. Uh, this is not only everybody's uh, prerogative, but it's your obligation. If you don't contradict yourself, your position isn't complex enough. <laughs> I, I, I will talk a little bit about um, what I've learned from psychedelics. I, I feel self-conscious doing it, but on the other hand, wouldn't it be stupid for me to talk about what you've learned from psychedelics? Uh, that would add presumption to the sins already uh, uh, arrayed here. There are different models about what, how, what the psychedelic experience is. Here's a couple. Building on Western psychotherapy as elaborated by Freud and Jung, one view of what psychedelics are is it's the part of your mind that you'd rather not do business with. It's the memories of childhood neglect or abuse. It's uh, repressed, kinky fantasies. It's, in other words, the, uh, the Freudian idea of the unconscious, that somehow these are drugs which dissolve the boundary between conscious and unconscious mind, and then you can do accelerated psychotherapy, because resistances have been pharmacologically overcome. That's one model. It's good as far as it goes. It just doesn't go far enough. Then there's another model, which I would call the traditional or shamanic model. And it says, uh, the cosmos is a series of levels. And these levels are connected by um, um, vertical routes of access, which can be thought of as simply flights through space or magical trees or magical ladders. Anyway, there's an, an image of ascent. And ordinary people exist on only one of these levels. But a shaman is not an ordinary person. A shaman is a superhuman person who has the power of animal allies behind them. And they can go up and down in these elevators that move between levels and they can therefore recover lost souls, see uh, social hanky-panky theft and adultery, see the causes behind that, see the causes behind disease, so forth and so on. That would be the traditional one. Uh, the, what I have concluded after 25 years of fiddling with this is that both of those ideas have a certain something to recommend them but that they don't go far enough and that we get more to the meat of this if we leave off psychological the first explanation or sociological the second explanation and actually go for something a little more uh, formal to wit a mathematical model of what shamanism is and what I mean by that is Let's think about what shamans do. They cure disease, and another way of putting that is they have a remarkable facility for choosing patients who will recover. They predict weather, they're very important. They tell where uh, game has gone, the movement of game and they seem to have a an, an paranormal ability to look into questions as i mentioned who's sleeping with who who stole the chicken uh who you know social uh transgressions are an open book to them well thinking about this from a mathematician's point of view a, a an all-encompassing explanation that would explain how all these magical feats are done is simply to suppose that the shaman is somehow able to project his consciousness his or her consciousness into a higher dimension not metaphorically as in Sylvester Stallone has many dimensions 
not metaphorically, but literally, as in one dimension, two dimension, three dimensions, and four. Because if you could move into the fourth dimension, the, men the dimension orthogonal to Newtonian space-time, seeing what the weather is going to be next week is as easy as seeing what the weather is now. Seeing where the game went is as easy as seeing where the game are. Knowing who stole the chicken is simply defined by looking to see who stole the chicken. And I have noticed that all of biology, not simply shamanism within the context of human society, but all of biology is in a sense a conquest of dimensionality. That as we ascend the phylogeny of organic life, what animals are, are a strategy for conquering space-time. And complex animals do it better than simpler animals. And we do it better than any complex animal. And we 20th century people do it better than any people in any previous century because we can bind data in so many ways that they couldn't electronically, on film, on tape, so forth and so on. So the, the progress of organic life is deeper and deeper into dimensional conquest. Well, from that point of view, then, the shaman begin to look like the advance guard of a new kind of human being. A human being that is as advanced over where we are as we are advanced over uh, people a million years ago because we have uh, you know very elaborate strategies for coding the past it's a dimensional conquest so that's part of what I've learned about psychedelics and I could have left it there but I never do